Hey guys, welcome back to Mountain Dog Companion. As always, bringing some good content here for you. In this week's hot topic here, we're going to be talking about genetics for dogs. So, a very serious um, but fun subject to talk about. As always, just bringing some good, um, good stuff for you here. Talking about some genetics, a very important part of breeding or just if you have a pet, you're curious about their genetics, it's always a good thing to uh, check in on that. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about two of the most common variants, I guess, for Bernice Mountain Dogs. Something that we really focus in on, um, two of the more important ones, which is uh, Von Willebrand's disease and degenerative myelopathy. Um, I'm gonna go with BWD for Von Willebrand's disease. It'll shorten it up a little bit for me. Um, so just a heads up on that. DM is short for degenerative myelopathy. So. Von Willebrand's disease isn't the most common thing in Bernice Mountain Dogs. I know it's more common for Dobermans to have. That's one of the more common breeds um, that kind of deals with that. But it's basically, I know humans can have it too, but it's basically, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult for um, dogs to create blood clotting. Um, it kind of affects that part of it. So it's almost like a thinner blood. Um, and basically, um, if they get scraped up or scabbed, it'll take a little bit more to heal that, to really clot over that. So um, definitely something you wanna keep an eye on and know about if you have a dog that's affected by that. Um, basically what happens is um, the blood is a little bit thinner and the brain basically doesn't tell um, the body to produce that clotting. It's a deficiency in a blood cell, so basically um, it just creates an issue with that. So. Um, there's really no outward evidence of this actually being the case, like if your dog's affected by it or not. It's not like they show any signs of it. It's not like there's any really any telltales that really tell you what's going on with it. So it's not um, something you can really just look at and see unless you're planning on doing a genetic test. Um, for us, we like running um, with Embark's testing, they have a really good system. They test for a ton of different stuff. It's just something really nice. Um, but there's also different ones like Gensel, there's Animal Genetics, there's Paw Print. I mean, everyone really tests for it. It's a very important thing for, for each and every dog to be tested for just to make sure that and they're healthy. That's kind of the end goal here is making sure the puppies are super healthy and happy and that's kind of the biggest thing we want to focus on. So uh, genetic testing is definitely the more important thing uh, for us here and that's kind of what brings out the subject here. So next up, talking about degenerative myelopathy or DM. So this is basically a disease that affects the spinal cord. It basically affects the nerves and what happens is um, the nerves gradually kind of break down, I guess, and it the brain doesn't allow to send, or it doesn't allow the brain to send signals back to the hind quarters, like your hips and your elbows, the hind feet. Um, it kind of dismantles that part of it, and basically, it it doesn't show up until the latter years um, of your Bernice Mountain Dog's life. And once you kind of go through that maturity, um, sometimes you'll notice a slight stumbling, I guess you could say. Um, and it just kind of gradually gets worse and worse and eventually those hind, hind legs unfor unfortunately just don't work. Um, sometimes you'll see those um, kind of have those wheel cart things um, almost looks like a small um, almost like a, a race cart for four horses almost like kind of like the same thing um, and it just really assists the hind, hind quarters of the dog so um, that happens um, later on, I'd say normally from six to nine years is kind of when you really start seeing it. So it really takes some time to show, and that's kind of why we, we like to do that genetic testing to kind of prevent that from happening earlier on, um, and just making sure that the puppies can help have a healthy and happy life. So um, that's kind of what DM is. Um, it is kind of, it's, it's more common in Bernice Mountain Dogs, I'd say, I think there's like 60% are affected. I think 8% are basically, um, are double carriers, which is basically, um, having two copies of the affected gene. There's two different genes. One is, uh, your SOD 1A and SOD 1B. SOD 1B is basically Bernice specific, um, but they can still carry that SOD 1A, so. Um, but both 
are with the Bernice Mountain Dogs. It doesn't matter if you have only a carrier of SOD 1A and a carrier of SOD 1B, and I mean, the puppies will still have that chance of having two copies, which is not good. So 8% of, uh, of the Bernice Mountain Dogs have um, the double carrier, and then the other 52%, or approximately 52%, have um, just one carrier, one copy of it. So they aren't at risk for it, and they just carry it, which can cause puppies to get it. So we'll kind of get into that too a little bit as far as your genes go. Um, so basically, if you're going carrier to carrier, so basically, if mom has a copy of DM or you know Von Willebrand's disease BWD. Um, and dad has a copy of it, just one copy. About 25% of the puppies can have uh, two copies of that gene. 25% would be clear and about 50% would have um, a copy of it, just one copy. So 25% are at risk, which is something we definitely don't want to get and it's definitely something that we try and prevent with the genetic testing. So basically, um, what we like to do if, since it is a higher percentage with Bernice Mountain Dogs to have it, we like to have at least one parent clear that completely takes away the puppy's chance of having that risk of developing DM. And so if one, one of the parents is a carrier or a, even a double carrier, which is something we don't have, but if that would be the case, and one parent is clear, it just completely takes away the chances of the puppies being affected by it. So. Um, and then, of course, if you go clear to clear, the puppies wouldn't have any copies of it. Um, now, if you go at risk to at risk, you have, I mean, each puppy will be at risk of developing it, which is not good at all. So um, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. It's definitely, if you're looking for a breeder, or if you're just getting into it, looking for a pet, um, feel free, I mean, do your due diligence, check out what the testing is, what testing is being done, make sure this stuff is being tested. It's super important, especially if you're looking for a long-term pet. Of course, everyone is, so um, that's kind of the end goal. So in the last bit of this video, we're going to be talking about OFA testing and why it's so important. So especially for your larger breeds, um, it's definitely important to test those hips, those elbows, make sure the heart and the eyes are doing good, make sure everything checks out. So um, OFA testing is uh, the orthopedic foundation of animals. Basically what they do is they take an x-ray, for example, if you're testing for hips, they take an x-ray of the hips, make sure the bone health, the joint health, everything is good. Um, the reason that large breeds are a little bit more affected by it or have this issue with uh, hips having issues is partially because of DM um, being so common and also just having all that wear and tear, carrying them around more weight, um, just being more of that style. So. Um, OFA testing, what we, what we do with Bernice Mountain Dogs is um, we have hip and elbows and the heart and the eyes. So those are the most important things, uh, making sure that bone structure is good, solid and healthy, making sure the eyes are good and of course heart health is always important. That's what keeps everyone moving along so um, that's the most important thing. So if you're looking for a breeder somewhere whatever the case may be if you're looking for a puppy make sure to check in on that see if OFAs are done especially for your larger breeds sometimes your smaller breeds like a mini poodle or something like that they won't have that that issue necessarily um, but your larger breeds will definitely it's always a good thing to to check out the OFAs so very important part of it if you're interested in learning more about genetics or if you have any questions for me regarding um, Bernice Mountain Dogs that we possibly have available or if you're just interested in some more info feel free to reach out to me. My name is Jay Miller. My number is 330-234-0102. You can call or text me. You can also email us at mountaindogcompanion at gmail.com. As always check out our Instagram page as well. We keep the good content coming for you. Always some good stuff with Bernice Mountain Dogs. We also have Bernadoodles, so if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check out the page. There's all sorts of good information there as well. We do as well have a website here uh, with Mountain Dog Companion. It's mountaindogcompanion.com where we have our available puppies, adult information, all the genetic testing, everything's right there for you to see. We're super transparent about that and we'd love for you to come out and see the parents as well. So. 
Um, if you have any questions for me or any interest in, in coming out, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for tuning in. As always, we'll see you next time. Take care.